Hey guys, it is Liberty here from Spirit Move Ministries. It is so awesome to be with you today on this lovely Wednesday. I leave tomorrow to head to Florida. I will be speaking at Cocoa Beach area and uh, there is a Preparing for the Glory conference and I will be speaking there and I'm so excited to come and see you guys and to spend time with you guys in Florida. You guys, uh, there's so much going on in the glory. If you didn't already know that, I'll tell you. God's on the move and revival is in the land. Amen. And uh, this word is times and seasons. It's a, a vision that the Lord gave me, but it is meant. I'm seeing in the spirit. I see the map of Europe. And I'm seeing something that looks like spiders crawling out of Russia into Ukraine, Poland, Moldova, Latvia. And I'm seeing witchcraft coming out of the Kremlin. Hey Angels, what's up? It's your girl Alicia and I'm here today with another video. And this video today is going to be a prophetic word for you guys. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the channel. My name is Alicia. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button, come over and join the family, become one of my angels. I would love to have you guys here. If you are already one of my angels, you guys know I love you so, so much. And without further ado, let's just dive right into this video. And just hear me out. I heard the Lord, our God, say that he is doing a new thing. Okay, angels? Our Lord is doing a new thing. Okay, so get excited. <laughs> I have seen. I have seen. <laughs> Hello, brethren sisters, Church of the Living God, and hello to you if you happen to click on this video. Hello. This video is a part two, you will, um, of I Have Dreamed a Dream, the previous video that um, was uploaded. This is a part two to it. In this video, we are going to be looking at what is a vision? How did God use visions? Does he still use visions today? Okay. What are they? How are they used? Okay. We're going to be looking at that today in scripture. Scripture is going to define this for us. Okay. So without any further ado, <laughs> please follow me along word for word, verse by verse at what we are going to be looking at today. It's important that you do that. That you follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, within the scripture. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure I'm telling you the truth, okay? Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures. Authorized version, commonly referred to as the King James Version. Please turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Genesis chapter 15. Now, we are going to, we're not going to be looking up every single reference of the word vision. We're not going to be concentrating on visions because what is visions, plural to vision, even though we're going to be looking up some references to the, uh, that are visions, okay? But visions is plural to vision. What is vision? Now, right away, vision, something that you see, okay? So, let's, let's go. Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 on verse 16. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision. The word of the Lord. Okay? Note that is not a capital W. Okay? Just to know that. But the word of the Lord came unto Abram. Not Abraham at this moment. But came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Okay, so right away, what did he do in this vision? He was reaffirming and comforting and telling Abram, it's like, hey, I am your shield. I am thy shield protection and thy exceeding great reward. Okay. 
And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given me given no seed. And lo, one born in mine house, in my house, is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, again the word of the Lord, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. So the word of the Lord came to unto him in verse 1, Fear not, <laughs> I am thy shield, I'm going to protect you, take care of you, and thy exceeding great reward. And in the uh, book of Revelation, our Lord Jesus Christ talks about, uh, and my reward is with me, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He is our reward. Precious. Nothing can compare, nothing on earth can compare to our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, God our Father. Okay, and here verse 4. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. Okay? Now, later on here uh, within Scripture, actually the next chapter, uh, Sarai, <laughs> Sarai and Abram take it upon themselves to fulfill verse 4 when God himself fulfilled it in Isaac, see. But we, we, that we can go off in a totally different rabbit trail with that one. But just, just so you know, okay, our Lord in verse 4 said something to Abram, promised him, <laughs> spoke as a matter of fact. Go figure that one out. But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? Now stop right there. Lord God said uh, in verse 1, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to be your shield protection. And I am your great reward, okay? And thy exceeding great reward himself. Verse 4, he's like, uh, you're going to have your own heir, okay? And Abram here says, and he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it. And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another, but the birds he divided not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Now, look at this, verse 12. Okay, first of all, before we read verse 12, is it even referenced slightly, slightly, that Abram was sueño, sleepy, asleep during all of this? No, sure doesn't look like it. It was as if he were having a conversation with God, wasn't he? That, that's a little sarcasm, okay? Okay, but now check this out. Check out verse 12. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. And lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. Okay? And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. 
Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Verse 17. And it came to pass that when the sun was went down, and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those, de those pieces. Verse 18. In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites, and the Kenizzites, and the Kadmonites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Rephaims, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. So, I know we read a little bit more, beg your pardon, but so, thus far, Thus far, okay? Thus far. In this vision, this is, uh, by the way, verse 1, that's the first appearance of vision. And the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision. So God was revealing something unto Abram in a vision, okay? Did he actually see the countenance of the Lord? It says, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Okay, so the Lord revealed to him in a vision that, number one, he was a shield, that he was his reward, and then also here in verse 4, that he was going to have an heir. But then in verse 12, we see that a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. So he had this vision before, before a deep sleep fell upon Abram. Hmm. Interesting. And we have to remember certain things about Abram. Okay. The word Hebrew. Abram, uh, the word Hebrew. Uh, Genesis chapter 4 verse 13. Okay. Genesis chapter 14 verse 13. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew. Hebrew. This is the first appearance of the word Hebrew in all of Scripture. And look unto whom it is attributed to. Abram, who would become Abraham. Okay? Okay? So unto Abram, who would become Abraham. And you see Hebrew sticks. Okay? Hebrew is affixed to Abram. Okay? And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of, plain of Mamre the Amorite, brother of Eshcol, and brother of Anar. And these were confederate with Abram. So Abram, Hebrew, this is the chosen line because in Genesis chapter 12, God calls Abram out. It's like, yo, come on, get out from amongst your people. And go to a land that I will shew thee. Okay? So, right away, Hebrew. Abram, Hebrew. Okay? The chosen line of Abram, who would become Abraham. The Hebrew line. Here's its, its beginnings. Okay? And also, okay, so Hebrew is associated with what? Abram. Abraham. The line of the Hebrew. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Hebrew line. Which descends from where? Shem, okay? Shem, okay? You can be a Shem and not be a Hebrew. You need to remember that different, okay? But Hebrew, Abram, who would become Abraham. Also about Abram, who would become Abraham, Genesis chapter 20, okay? Hebrew, Abraham's a Hebrew, okay? Genesis chapter 20, verse 7, which we discussed in the previous video, now, therefore, restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet. First appearance of the word prophet, right here. And he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. So now, put on the brakes here for a minute. Now think, okay? Now think on this. Abram, who would become Abraham, okay? Hebrew, prophet, dreams, okay, in Genesis chapter 20, associated with Abraham, 
Here he's Abraham, okay? Vision. Associated with what? With who? Abram, the Hebrew prophet. Okay? Okay, you get it? All associated with who? With, who? with what? The Hebrew. Okay? But looking now at where we were in Genesis chapter 15, verse 12, let's read that verse again. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. Turn to Job. Job chapter 4. Job chapter 4. I'm going to look at the references, all of them actually in the book of Job. There's not that many, only four. Okay. Job chapter 4. Job chapter 4. Now, it's very important to note how it said in Genesis 15 Ur of the Chaldees. That Abram was called out of Ur of the Chaldees. Job. Okay. There was a man in the land of Uz. Whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. And one that feared God and eschewed evil. Okay. Not Ur but Uz. Very interesting. Don't get that confused. But. Job chapter 4. This is Alphaz the Temanite. Speaking unto Job. And has already affixed onto Job an accusation. When, of course, God says of Job that he is a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Okay? But Job chapter 4, verses 12 on to verse 17. Now, take notice of this. Now, a thing was secretly brought to me, and mine ear received a little thereof. In thoughts from the vision of the night. You're going to see this appear quite a few times. Visions of the night. When deep sleep falleth on men. When deep sleep falleth on men. Hmm. When. As we first saw in the first reference, there is no indication before verse 12 that Abram was asleep. Or at all. Actually, it isn't until verse 12 that we are told that he was in a deep sleep. Okay? Hinge this stuff. Okay? Let's continue. In thoughts from... Reading verse 13 again. In thoughts from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falleth on men, fear came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones to shake. Very similar about how it talks about in uh, Genesis chapter 15, how horror came upon Abram, right? Then a spirit, then a spirit, lowercase s, passed before my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern the form thereof. An image was before mine eyes. There was silence. And I heard a voice saying, Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Mm. So in verse 13, he says, In thoughts from the visions of the night. Mm. Visions of the night. When deep sleep, when deep sleep falleth on men. Mm. But we saw in Genesis chapter 15, Verses 1 and 4, uh, no evidence, no indication whatsoever that Abram was even lying down or attempting to sleep or anything like that. We don't get anything of him sleeping, the deep sleep, until verse 12. Hmm. That, remember this, because this is going to be very important, okay, as we continue, all right? Now... Go to Job chapter 7. Job chapter 7. We want verses, not 10, Brad. We want verses 7 under verse 15. Check this out. Okay? Visions of the night. When deep sleep falls upon men. Hmm. Check this out. Job chapter 7, verses 7 under verse 15. Now this is Job speaking. Oh, remember that my life is wind. 
mine eye shall no more see good. The eye of him that hath seen me shall see me no more. Thine eyes are upon me, and I am not. As the cloud is consumed and vanisheth away, so he that goeth down to the grave shall come up no more. He shall return no more to his house, neither shall his place know him any more. Therefore I will not refrain my mouth, I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will, I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Am I a sea or a whale? that thou settest a watch over me? When I say, my bed shall comfort me, my couch shall ease my complaint, then thou scarest me with dreams and terrifiest me through visions. So here we see dreams and visions, okay? Two separate things, but yet they are linked together. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Note this, okay? It, you know, if you if you got a pen or something, this is something worth noting, okay? Look at that. Then thou scarest me with dreams and terrifiest me through visions. And where do you get your dreams? When do you have dreams? Sueño, when you're sleeping, okay? When you're sleeping. Well, what about daydreaming? Ah, uh, no, no. Scripture, watch, watch the previous video, okay? Watch the previous video, okay? Dream is associated, according to Scripture, with sleeping, okay? Okay? But, verse 14 again. Then thou scarest me with dreams, and terrifiest me through visions. Hmm. They're linked together here. But they're not the same thing. Okay, you got to remember that. Dreams and visions, they're, they're right there linked together, but they're not the same thing. Okay, let's continue. So that my soul chooseth strangling and death rather than my life. I loathe it. I would not live always. Let me alone, for my days are vanity. What is man that thou shouldest magnify him, and that thou shouldest set thine heart upon him? Hmm. So, visions of the night when deep sleep falleth upon men, and the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Hmm. And then, verse 12 in Genesis chapter 15, then he has a deep sleep. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, let, let's continue. Let's continue. Oh, and uh, this uh, right here, we have to mention uh, verse, uh, right here, verse thir uh, 14. Then thou scarest me with dreams and terrifiest me through visions. Uh, hold your place here and go to Numbers chapter 12. Okay. Numbers chapter 12. Dreams, uh, why, we're, why we are looking at this. Dreams and visions linked together again. Okay. Numbers chapter 12, verses 5 and 8. On to verse 8. And we, we covered this in the previous video. But in the previous video, we were talking about dreams. Today, we are talking about visions, okay? Verses 5 on to verse 8 in Numbers chapter 12. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, and we just looked at that, that Abram, unto Abram, Abraham, the Hebrew, was first mentioned of being a prophet. Ha! Interesting. So, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that is the line of the Hebrew, okay? Hebrew. The first appearance of the word Hebrew is uh, upon who? Abram. That line chosen from Shem. Okay? Hebrew and prophet. Okay? So, uh, where were we? <laughs> Sorry. And the Lord, verse 5 in uh, Numbers chapter 12. And the Lord came down in a pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, 
Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. So we see we have vision and dream linked together. Two separate things, okay? But they're linked. We're going to show... We're going to talk about what this link actually is. We'll see. But let's continue, okay? My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. It doesn't say his face. See, like the similitude, the outline, if you will, of the Lord. Because remember, he put uh, Moses in a cleft of the rock and covered him with his hand and then let his hand go. And he only saw his back parts, not his face. Okay? Okay? It says right there what? Uh, yeah, my servant Moses is not so. Verse 8, with him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. You'll see it. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So if there be a prophet, visions and dreams. And thus far, what we have learned, okay? Abraham, Abram, who would become Abraham, okay? It's Hebrew. Abraham, Abram, or Abraham, excuse me, Abraham, okay, unto Abraham was given the very first mention of prophet. And here, prophet, vision, dream. Mm. Mm. Interesting, huh? Okay, let's, let's continue going back to Job chapter 7, okay? Job chapter 7, did we go up to verse 15 already? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. So, so we see uh, with verse 14, Then thou scarest me with dreams, and terrifiest, terrifiest me through visions. Hmm. Okay? Now go to Job chapter 20. Job chapter 20. Verses 4 on to verse 8. Now this is Zophar, the Namathite speaking. Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment? Through his excellency, though his excellency mount up to the heavens, and his head reach unto the clouds, meaning that he's high-minded, okay, arrogant, puffed up, that kind of thing, okay? Yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? He shall fly away as a dream, okay? And shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. Fly away as a dream. You could be sound asleep dreaming and then you'll hear something and you're like, oh, and wake up. Or you can be kind of in that state, you know, before you kind of like, you know, kind of like dozing, you know. And then this says, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. One more in Job. Job chapter 33, verse 17. Job chapter 33, verse 17. 13 on to verse 17. I beg your pardon. Job chapter 33, verses 13 on to verse 17. And this is the young whippersnapper. Eli, uh, Eliu speaking. Okay? This is the young whippersnapper. Verses 13 on to verse 17. Why dost thou strive against him? For he giveth not account of any of his matters. Out of Job's three friends, uh, Elihu gave the better arguments, but they all accused Job of doing something that he didn't do. 
But before Elihu spake up, Job kind of did boast himself. Okay? He did. We've talked about that before, but let's continue, okay? Verse 14. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. Pay attention to this. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. For God speaketh once, verse 15, in a dream, in, comma, in a vision of the night, yea, twice, Okay? When deep sleep falleth upon men in slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. Oh, very revealing here what we just looked at. Okay? Look at this. Don't look at me. Come on. Look at the verses here. Okay? For God speaketh once, once. Okay? Verse 15. In a dream. Once. Okay? Yea, twice. Verse 15. In a vision of the night. Twice. Okay? Two separate things. There is a comma there. Okay? When deep sleep falleth upon men in slumberings upon the bed. Now, look at that, okay? Remember this. Verse 14, speaketh once in a dream. Number one is the dream, okay? Number two, twice, yea, twice, in a vision of the night, okay? When deep sleep falleth upon men. Now, now, take your little finger, okay? And look at this, okay? Verse 14 says, speaketh once in a dream, okay? Deep sleep falleth upon men. One, dream, deep sleep, okay? Verse 14, yea, twice, okay? Verse 15, in a vision, in slumberings upon the bed. Slumberings, twice. Hmm. Slumbering is not a deep sleep. Deep sleep, you're out, okay? Deep sleep, someone can go up to you and wake you <laughs> You know, as a one awaketh out of a deep sleep, okay? But slumbering is kind of like just slumbering away. Slumbering is not a deep sleep. Do you see that? Okay? We're, we're, build, we're, we're building up to something, so go along with me, okay? So do you see that? How that is lined up like that? The first thing, dream, deep sleep. The second thing, a vision, um... A vision, a uh, second thing, vision in the night in slumberings upon the bed. Hmm. But when Abram had his vision in Genesis chapter 15, at the first, he said nothing of that, did it? No. No. Let's continue now. Let's continue. Um, got a reference here. Uh, Psalm 73. Psalm 73, verse 20. Psalm 73, verse 20, just one verse, just one verse. Here, um, you want, some of you might have, well, what about a daydream? Okay, what say at the scripture? A dream? When do dreams happen? Uh, Psalm 73, verse 20, as a dream, when one awaketh. So, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. What does verse 20 tell us? Dream when one, as a dream, when one awaketh. Dream is what? When someone is sleeping. Okay? Daydream, like just sitting there, kind of like, oh, almost in a trance? Hmm. Trance-like state? Getting a little ahead of ourselves, okay? Now go back to Numbers chapter 24, okay? Numbers chapter 24. So thus far, thus far, let's recap, okay? 
The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. God said to him, I'm your shield and your reward. Okay? He was revealing to Abram. It's like, I'm going to protect you. And my reward is with me. I am your reward. God. Wow. Okay? Then, I'm going to give you an heir. Okay? Then the deep sleep comes upon him. And then he reveals uh, more truth to him during that. But first, first the vision uh, that he had, the word of the Lord came on to him. Okay? Okay? And vision of the night and then deep sleep. Hmm. They're two different things. Okay? Remember, deep sleep is not slumbering also. Okay? Numbers chapter 24. Numbers chapter 24. Verses 1 on to verse 5. This is good old Balaam. Oh, yeah. Good old Balaam. Numbers chapter 24. Verses 1 on to verse 5. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went, he went not as at other times to seek for enchantments, but he set his face toward the wilderness. And Balaam... Pay attention to this. And Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes. And the Spirit of God came upon him. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam the son of Beor has said, The man whose eyes are open hath said. He has said, which heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty. Are you looking at that? Falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. Ah. Ah. Okay. Verse 5. How goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel. Okay, so this this right here is telling us something, isn't it? Look, now, now, let's look at this. Look at this. Verses 3 and 4, okay? And he took up his parable and said, Balaam the son of Beor has said, The man whose eyes are open has said, Generally, when your eyes are open, you're awake. There are rare conditions out there. I have even met an old biker guy who actually, but his eyes were totally glazed over. I have seen with my own eyes someone who was asleep with their eyes open, but some kind of foggy looking look comes on them where you can go. I knew a biker guy, a big burly biker guy who he, he fell asleep and uh, his eyes were open, but they weren't like wide open or anything like that. And you, and you go up to him, nothing, you know, like, hey, 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 hey. I didn't snap because the guy probably would have pulled a gun on me and shot me. But I have seen that, okay? But, but, okay, whose eyes are open, open, okay? He was seen. He was awake. He has said, which heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. Hmm. Hmm. Trance. Now, when you think of trance, what do you think of? You think of like uh, faithful servants of Antichrist, that look that's on his face, right? <laughs> when you're walking around with, uh, yeah, yeah, that's kind of like that. But also you can be having like a, a moment where you're just sitting there and we refer to it as zoning out. Okay. That is similar to a trance-like state. Because, see, right away, because of Hollywood and stuff like that, you think about, you know, voodoo, witch doctors, blah, blah, blah. A trance like, you know, like a zombie. Uh, you think that's a trance. Yes, that is. Okay. But that's not all it's limited on to. You could be sitting there just, you know, 
sitting there daydreaming, you could say, I guess, but just sitting there wide awake and zoned out, but yet you have your functions and you're just, you're sitting there kind of, this is, this has happened to you before. Okay. That state of where you're, I'm going to refer to it, that the trance-like state of where you're kind of zoned out, you know, just, just sitting there and someone say, to you, hey, Brad, and uh, just, Brad, Brad, oh, what, what, man? Oh, sorry, I was just, just zoning out. Hmm. 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 Still having your functions and your faculties with you. Absolutely. Hmm. But there are some things we have to remember about good old Balaam here. Uh, first of all, go to Second Peter, okay? We've we got to remember this about Balaam, okay? We have to remember this. Very important. Whenever, whenever you're using any reference uh, to Balaam at all, you have to bring these things to light. Okay, 2 Peter chapter 2. We want verses 12 on to verse 16, okay? 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 16. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, while they feast with you. These are these false prophets that we are talking about. Absolutely, okay? But let's continue. Having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children. Beg your pardon. Like all these here on YouTube, these prophetic word people, prophetic dream people. Most of them are monetized. Most of them are, you know, plant a harvest. God wants to, God's doing a new thing. Oh, God has shown me. I have seen someone giving me a thousand dollars and the Lord giving you a, shut up. Shut up. It's talking about those types of people. Okay. Verse 15. Look what these people are being compared on to. Very important, okay? Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Yeah, the prophet for hire. You give him the right price, who knows? Here in Numbers was different, okay? Because the Lord told them, it's like, okay, I because and, and this explains a little why. Well, if God was so mad, why did He allow Him to do that? Um, number one, He was giving a prophecy, okay? He was telling um, this the king of Moab about what was um, how He was going to fall because of Israel, okay? It had something to do with Israel, but. All things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. Romans 15, 4. Okay. Balaam was a prophet for hire. But in this case, when he prophesied of the things onto, what was it, Abimelech, I believe it was? Uh, not, not Abimelech. Um, not uh, Balak. Thank you. Thank you. Balak. Okay. Uh, when he was prophesying onto Balak, he was telling him, oh, you're, you're pretty much done for. Okay. Balaam was a prophet for hire, okay? Very similar to these prophetic word, prophetic dream people that you see on YouTube. That that one wicked uh, spirit move ministry, oh, oh, disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. But back to 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 15. Let's read that again. Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. 
And the wages of unrighteousness, the uh, wages of sin is death. Okay? Um, remember, the wages are not always this. These prophetic fools. Oh, and by the way, happy Atheist Day today. <laughs> and all these prophetic fools. Okay? Their wages are not just money from YouTube. Or money from whatever. It's the praises of men. Men. How can ye believe who receive honor one from another? Yeah. Well, look at verse 16. But was rebuked for his iniquity, the dumb not being able to speak, as, thank ye, speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. Verse 17 as well. These are wells without water. These prophetic word, prophetic dream devils. Okay? These are wells without water. Clouds that are carried with the tempest. To whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. And yes, dear brother, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Okay? So, Balaam loved the wages of unrighteousness, okay? And uh, Jude, <laughs> Jude chapter 11, Jude verse 11. Jude doesn't have chapters. <laughs> Jude 11. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam, what is that error? For reward. Money, 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 money. Yeah. And perished in the gainsaying of Korah. We have to remember this about Balaam. Okay? You, you, we never, actually, never forget this about Balaam. And go to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verses 13 on to verse 15. This is uh, him talking to the angel in Pergamos. Verses 13 on to verse 15. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in the days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Well, Balaam was uh, going after, he loved the raid, wages of unrighteousness. He liked the reward. And what did he, what was his doctrine? Let's, let's keep reading. Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block. Ah. Ah. Before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. The text, the verse itself, defines, tells you what the doctrine of Balaam was. Okay? It was a stumbling block, and it was something to eat sacrifices, sacrifice, uh, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Hmm. Uh, the modern equivalent of that is the Catholic cup and the Catholic pucarist. Okay? <laughs> so hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Nicolaitan, someone who's up here ruling over the laity. Boy, I uh, don't know anybody who's like all the way up here, <laughs> right? These, these prophetic word people. You can't talk to them, by the way. It's, it's futile to try to speak with them. It's futile to, uh, especially the, you know, you, you reference uh, 1 Timothy, uh, what is it, chapter 2? And what was it, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, I believe it is? Um, <laughs> you, you try to talk to any of these women um, about that. They, they, they just shut you off. They're almost as bad as some of these uh, black Hebrew Israelite people. There's, there's, no, there's no reasoning with them. There's no speaking with some of them. 
just got to let them go. Just got to let them go. One second, brethren. Mm, okay, sorry about that. So, the doctrine of Balaam was to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel uh, to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. Okay? That was the doctrine of Balaam, who loved the rewards of unrighteousness. And go back to Numbers 31. Now, Numbers 31. Numbers 31. Verses 13 and 15. Okay. Numbers uh, 31. Verses 13 and 15. And Moses and Eleazar the priest. And all the princes of the congregation. Went forth to meet them without the camp. And Moses was wroth. With the officers of the host. With the captains over thousands. And captains over hundreds. Which came from the battle. And Moses said unto them. Have ye saved all the women alive? Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. And there was a great plague among the congregation of the Lord. Okay? Now therefore kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman that hath known man by lying with him. So, kill all the little ones. Uh, yeah. So they don't grow up to be enemies of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But see. Verse 16. Behold these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam. See Balaam used the daughters of Moab. To put a stumbling block before Israel. And bring them on to sacrifices of their gods. And to commit fornication with them. The thing with uh, Eliezer is stabbing uh, piercing Cosby. And that one guy threw the tent in the sight of Mo uh, Moses and whatnot. When they brought the Midianitish woman in there. Or the Moabitish wom woman in there. Okay. See. Balaam used the daughters of Moab. As a stumbling block. Okay. Very important to remember that about uh, Balaam here. And go to Deuteronomy chapter 23. Deuteronomy chapter 23. Verses 1 on to verse 6. He that is wounded in the stones or hath his privy member cut off shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. <laughs> we can go off on something uh, way about uh, pretty, pretty intense on that. Um, his stones, <laughs> wounded in the stones, Use your imagination what's being referenced to. Hath his privy member cut off? I'll leave that for you to chew on. Okay, let's continue. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Semicolon. Even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Unto the tenth generation. Meaning it's going to take at least ten generations to purge out for some to in order to come unto the Lord. And remember from what? I think it was from David unto Christ there were fourteen generations. No, no, I forget what, how that's... Um, worded in one of the gospel accounts. Brother, please put that in the uh, description box for me about how there were 14 generations from one to another and 14 generations uh, to Christ or something like that. That's in the gospel accounts. But, okay, it says unto the 10th, even to his 10th generation. Okay, so up to 10 generations. It takes 10 generations, more or less, hmm. to get some of this out of them. Hmm. See, they're not permanently excluded. Excluded up to a point, up to 10 generations. Don't forget that. And it says here in verse 3, forever those before or after that, after that 10th generation, yes. But before that, no. 
No. Why? Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when ye came forth out of Egypt. And because they hired against thee Balaam the son of Beor of Pethor of Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia, which I believe was the land of Alexander the Great, <laughs> to curse thee. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because the Lord thy God loved thee. Thou shalt not seek their peace, nor their prosperity all thy days forever. Hmm. Until after the 10th generation. Okay? Okay? This was how serious of the error and that wicked doctrine that Balaam introduced and took and that the children of Israel went astray in. Oh, you think these female prophets are daughters of Balaam? Gee, I wonder. You know, now, hey, there are some men that do it. Yes, yes. But you do your YouTube search, you're going to see, you're going to see these females. Okay. And let's ultimately not forget what, what happened. What happened to uh, good old Balaam, who uh, uh, through the women of Moab, cast a stumbling block. Okay. Love the wages for unrighteous, of unrighteousness. Hmm? Uh, Joshua 13, just one verse, verse 22. Balaam also the son of Beor, the soothsayer, did the children of Israel slay with the sword among them that were slain by them. Go back to Numbers chapter 24 now. Uh, yeah, Balak was quite a piece of work. But yet he had visions of God. And in this incident, Balaam, who was a wicked man, God used him. Didn't he? He sure did. He sure did. Okay. Now, let's read verses 15 on to verse 17 in um, Numbers chapter 24. We're skipping a little. Verses 15 on to verse 17. Okay. We had to go through that with Balaam. Okay. You have to understand um, just how bad Balaam was. But yet. But yet. But yet, as we read, as we already saw, God would not hearken unto Balaam, but turned the curse into a blessing. Okay? Numbers 24, verses 15 on to verse 17. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam the son of Beor has said, And the man whose eyes are open has said, He has said, which heard the words of God, and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. Hmm. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star, capital S, out of Jacob. And a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Seth, Sheth. And that in fact happened. Okay? And that in fact happened. So God was using Balaam as a prophecy onto Balak for judgment purposes. And of course they killed Balaam the soothsayer with the sword anyway. Okay. Remember the trance thing. Okay. Remember the trance. Hinge the trance thing. Very important because we're going to be coming back to that. Remember that. And remember, a trance is not always a uh, zombie thing. Like I said, you can be sitting there looking outside your window. Just... Like in a trance, you know, having your eyes open, fully responsive on the things like, ooh, ah. Someone could be talking to you, hey, 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 hey. But yet your eyes are fixated on these things. 
kind of like in a trance-like state. Remember the trance thing, okay? Remember that. Now go to 1 Samuel chapter 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3, okay? Do we see so far how the Lord has used visions, okay? Have you seen thus far, okay? Note to where we're reading in the Old Testament. Okay, okay. First uh, Samuel chapter three, verses one under verse ten. Okay, and the child Samuel, the last, uh, I think he was the last judge before the kings. Yes, he was. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. God wasn't openly speaking to people. And no, look at that verse. Don't look at me. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. Okay? Open vision. No one was like, oh, that's the seer. Or that's the, you know. Eli was, but uh, Eli, uh, if we were to read the entire chapter... Uh, Eli doesn't work good for Eli, okay? Well, we're, we're going to read what Eli is going, what's going to happen to Eli, maybe. But let, let's, let's read. Verses 1 on to verse 10. Let's continue. And it came to pass at that time, when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim, that he could not see, ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. Check this out. And the Lord called Samuel. And he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli. Now, the Lord called Samuel. So, what does this tell us? And verse 5, And he ran unto Eli. Now, hold on. What does this say this? It said Samuel was laid down to sleep. To sleep. Okay? It does not say, and Samuel was laid down a sleep. It says, to sleep. He laid down, beginning to slumber. Okay? You know, sueño. Poquito sueño. Little sleepy. Okay? And the Lord called, verse 4, and the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, here am I. Okay? So he was like, oh, here I am, here am I. Okay, welcome. You know, he was, what does it say there? Laid down to sleep. Okay, so he heard the Lord. It's like, oh, oh, he goes on to Eli. And he ran on to Eli and said, here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not. Lay down again. And he went and lay down. What, what, what is that? What is that? Beg your pardon. Beg your problem. Okay. And the Lord called again, Samuel, this is the second time, and Samuel arose. So, okay, he was laying down to sleep, and the Lord's like, Samuel, okay, gets up, and Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst called me. And he answered, I called not my son. Lie down again. Okay? Remember, I told you about the trance thing and what we've already looked at. Uh, uh, when deep sleep falleth on, uh, upon men in visions of the night. When deep sleep falleth upon men. Hmm? And we already saw in the very first reference a vision that uh, Abram was not in a deep sleep when he had that vision, did he? Okay. Th this is important when scripturally seeing what visions are. And how these wicked people are not having true visions from the Lord. Not at all. Okay. Let's, now let's continue. Okay. Verse 7. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord reveal, yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. Three times. And verse 7 it says, And Samuel did not yet know the Lord. So Samuel didn't know... The Lord was calling him. 
Okay? And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Picture it. Just picture it. Here am I, for thou didst call me. Eli kind of like figured it out. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto, unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Can you, can you handle, can you handle to verse 14? That's kind of a rhetorical question. Let's keep reading. And the Lord said to Samuel, oh, uh, verse 10. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times. Note that the Lord came and stood and called as at other times. Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. Now, in this con uh, context, the Lord stood, but it's just said that Samuel said, Speak, Lord, for, speak, for thy servant heareth. Okay? Doesn't say anything about him hearing the Lord and then him looking at him or anything. No. Remember, um, remember how John fell at his feet as if dead? Okay? Okay? Um, if the Lord's going to appear to you, are you going to be eyeball? Some of you or some of these wicked people would be like, oh yeah, I'd be like, no, you wouldn't. The terror of the creator of everything, the terror of the Lord being right there. Come on, come on. I, I saw the Lord and come back from heaven and now I wrote a book and I'm on Sid Roth's. Oh, let's continue. Now, Okay, now it's established. The Lord is speaking to Samuel. Samuel knows. It's like, okay, the Lord's speaking to me. How, what does the Lord do? How does he? Check this out. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, beside, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. What a way to begin a conversation, huh? <laughs> wow, huh? Yeah. Okay, let's... Let's keep reading. I, I, I wrote down here to verse 21, but well, let's keep reading while we're at it, huh? Very good stuff. And Samuel lay until the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel feared to shew Eli the vision. Okay? Samuel was not asleep. He heard the word of the Lord. The Lord, the Lord stood there. It doesn't say anything about uh, Samuel looking around or anything, but heard the Lord. The Lord stood. Okay? So, and Samuel was not asleep. Samuel was not asleep. Okay? So, verse 16. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, here am I. <laughs> and he said, what is the thing that the Lord has said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. God do so to thee, and more also, if thou hide anything from me of all things that he said unto thee. How do you like to be put in that position? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, whatever he told me, whatever he told you, you tell me. Okay? And, what, you know, it's like, <laughs> poo poo on you if you don't. Okay? Verse 18, And Samuel told him every whit, and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord. Let him see, let him do what seemeth him good. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. Let none of his words 
fall to the ground. Okay? And all Israel from Dan even to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord again appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Okay? Okay? There was no open vision, but Samuel saw a vision. Okay? The Lord woke him up. Samuel. Ah! Samuel, Samuel. The servant heareth, Lord. Okay? Samuel was awake. Okay? All right. And note too, like we had said in verse 3, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. He wasn't asleep, to sleep. So that state between awake, sleep, and then deep sleep. Hmm. Hmm. And well, go to Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. Whoa. Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29, verses 7 on to verse 12. And the multitude of all the nations that fight against Ariel, even all that fight against her and her munition, and that distress her, Israel, that's the her, shall be as a dream of a night vision. Be as a dream of a night vision. Now, can someone have a dream and not a vision? Can someone have a vision and not a dream? We just saw Samuel had a vision, but it wasn't having a dream. Check this out. It shall even be as one as when a man at verse eight. It shall even be as when an hungry man dreameth, and behold he eateth, but he awaketh and his soul is empty. Fleets fleeing away, chases away. You know, sound asleep, dreaming, someone wake up and you're like, huh. Or you're in that that uh, state, you know, that trance like state. You know, not asleep, not really awake, just kind of zoning out or just doing whatever, you know. But see here, someone who, a hungry man who's dreaming that he's eating, but when he wakes up, but he awaketh and his soul is empty. Mm. Or as when a thirsty man dreameth, and behold, he drinketh, but he awaketh, and behold, he is faint, and his soul hath appetite. So shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against Mount Zion. Oh, and we can go off on so many wabbits on verse 8, but not in this video, okay? Not in this video. Let's continue. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. For the Lord hath poured, upon, poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. Hmm. And hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. Hmm. Deep sleep. They're dreaming. They think that they're hearing from God. They're hearing from Satan. These, these false prophetic word people, these prophetic dream people, okay? I don't care how genuine or how sincere they seem. They're not hearing from God. They are hearing from the little G God of this world. But the true God of the scriptures... They're not hearing from him. They're hearing from Satan. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book. That is sealed. Why is it that with these, um, most of them, not all of them, 
probably about 90% of them, when they have these prophetic uh, visions, they'll, they'll quote one verse of scripture, but they won't get into it and compare scripture with scripture. Why? Why is that? Because their prophetic words are contrary to scripture. They can't back up what they say with scripture. Oh, it's like that one, uh, that one young Hamite woman. Um, you know, angels, uh, the God, the uh, Lord said to me, he's doing a new thing. And yes, you can find in Isaiah where I will do a new thing. Yes, yes. But context, okay? If these people were truly of the Lord, if these people, these prophetic dreamers, these prophetic word people, if they were truly, they're not, but just if they truly were, get your authorized version of scriptures, okay? God spoke to me. God said to me, here, we're speaking here. See, turn here. They, they would be using the scriptures. But God doesn't operate that way today. God does not operate that way today. Okay? The sign gifts ended. <laughs> the sign gifts ended with the apostles. Okay? After the book of Acts, in the previous video, I said about how you don't, uh, dreams and stuff like that ended in Acts chapter 2. And you don't see dreams again. You see dreamers in the book of Jude. Okay? Yes. And visions, um, you see, and we're going to be looking at uh, vision and visions in the book of Acts, okay? What I meant to say was, after, after the book of Acts, when the apostles, you know, at, after Acts chapter 7, that is when the sign gifts started to dwindle away. Because the sign gifts were there to confirm unto the Jews, hey, the gospel. But after Acts chapter 7, they as a nation rejected it. So the sign gifts started to dwindle away. Started to. After Acts chapter 7. That's what I meant, by the way. <laughs> okay. But after the book of Acts. Okay. Dreams and visions. And you got to remember, the book of Acts is a transition book. Okay. You have to remember that. But after the book of Acts, why? Because God doesn't operate that way anymore. You have to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Okay? Now let's continue. Okay? Verse 11, here in Isaiah chapter 29, just to verse 12. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. Hmm. Hmm. See, the ignorance of God's word, the authorized version of the scriptures, is one of Satan's greatest tactics. And he deceives you by all the Bibles out there. Okay, like your NIV, ESV, New American Standard, and all that nonsense, okay? The ignorance of God's word is one of his strongest things. So you get these Christians in the buildings and these Christians online who go with their feelings and they want to go to the prophet because the spirit of the Lord is not in them. The spirit of truth will lead them and guide them into all truth. You read that in John chapter 16, okay? These people don't have the true spirit of God, okay? They don't. And Isaiah chapter 28 Verses 7 and 8. <laughs> but they have also erred through wine. And through strong drink are they out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. For all tables are full of vomit and filthiness so that there is no place clean. And exactly so. Oh, and the wine that these people are drinking? Uh, read Revelation chapter 17 sometime. Okay? Read Revelation chapter 17. Go ahead. Where are these people getting their wine? Huh? And, and you look at the, these, these wicked prophetic dreamers and these prophetic... Well, word people, they're making people, they're filthy. 
They're full of vomit. <laughs> They're filthy. They are not hearing from the living God. They're hearing from Satan, people. Okay? They are hearing from Satan. They are not hearing from God. Okay? Now, go to 1 Chronicles chapter 17. 1 Chronicles chapter 17. 1 Chronicles chapter 17, verses 3 on to verse 5. Nathan, speaking on to David. Check this out. Okay? And it came to pass the same night that the word of God came to Nathan, a prophet, saying, Go and tell David my servant, Thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not build me an house to dwell in. For I have not dwelt in, a, in any house since the day that I brought up Israel unto this day, but have gone from tent to tent, and from one tabernacle to another. And while we are here, skip down to verses 11 on to verse 15. And it shall come to pass, when thy days be expired, that thou must go to be with thy fathers, that I will raise up thy seed after thee, which shall be of thy sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build me a house, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son, and I will not take my mercy away from him, as I took it from him that was before thee. But I will settle him in mine house, and in my kingdom forever, and his throne shall be established forevermore. Future prophecy also, he's talking about Solomon, but also the, the purest fulfillment of this prophecy is on to our Lord Jesus Christ, the son of David, king of the Jews, when he comes back to rule and reign in the millennial kingdom for a thousand years. Millennial kingdom, okay? Excuse me, kingdom of heaven. Millennial kingdom is not in the scriptures. Beg your pardon, kingdom of heaven. When he comes back to reign in the kingdom of heaven for a thousand years, okay? Okay? Future fulfillment of the, the full fulfillment of this prophecy. Okay? Partly fulfilled with Solomon, yes, but ultimately fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Verse 15. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. So what was the purpose of this vision? To affirm unto David of Solomon, but also the coming of the Lord himself. Prophecy. Okay? That's what... And this... and Now, was Nathan asleep? No, but it came to him in the night. Hmm? Was he in like a translite state? Hmm. Hmm. But this we do know. Nathan wasn't asleep. He wasn't dreaming. Okay? And the Lord revealed unto Nathan, and Nathan revealed this unto David. Okay? And... We have it for us right here, okay? Okay? And Second Chronicles now, 26. Second Chronicles chapter 26, verses 1 on to verse 5. Are, are, are you beginning to see how God uses visions and how these visions came about and in what circumstances and why? Huh? Second Chronicles chapter 26, verses 1 under verse 5. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in the room of his father Amaziah. He built Eloth and restored it to Judah after that the king slept with his fathers. 16 years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 2 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Jeconiah of Jerusalem. Of Jechaliah, excuse me, of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who, Zechariah, had understanding in the visions of God. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Hmm. So Zechariah had understanding in the visions of God. Hmm. So God is the ultimate one who gives man understanding of the visions. Hmm. Hmm. 
Jeremiah chapter 14. Jeremiah chapter 14. Jeremiah chapter 14. Really don't need to say too much to you because the scripture is actually speaking for itself, isn't it? Jeremiah chapter 14, verses 13 on to verse 16. Now, we went through some of the, these verses that we're going to be looking at in the previous video, but it's meat. And also, I got to mention, again, to understand what visions are, according to Scripture, you know, what a vision is, how God used them, we don't need to go to the book of Daniel. Okay, we are not going to be looking in the book of Daniel to get the scriptural definition of what a vision is, how the Lord used them, and how they are brought about, about and such and such. We don't have to go there to Daniel to understand how they are used and how they came about. Okay, so like I said in the previous video, we're not going to be touching Daniel. Okay, just so you know. Jeremiah chapter 14, verses 13 on to verse 16. Then said I, ah, Lord God, Behold, the prophets say unto them, Ye shall not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine. But I will give you a short peace in this place. Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. Okay? What is that? Uh, um, something... Uh, something ministry that that one Jeff uh Jephthah uh, Jephthahite woman that you saw uh, God is not speaking to these women these prophetic dreamers these prophetic word people God is not speaking to these people Satan is speaking to these people not God okay God does not operate like that anymore okay you have to rightly divide the word of truth after the book of Acts, you don't see this anymore. After the book of Acts, you don't see it in the Pauline epistles, uh, which is for us today. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay, we talk about this in the previous video. But, <coughs> yes, the, then the Lord said unto me, verse 14 again, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision, a false vision and divination, and a thing of naught, and the deceit of their heart. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, and I sent them not. Yet they say, Sword and famine shall not be in this land. Oh, God's going to do a new thing. Seven years of blessing. The time of Jacob's trouble is coming. Seven years of death. Okay? Unless the Lord save you, and then you get redeemed when he calls up his body, the church of the living God, you're going to be left behind to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. And you got these wicked, disgusting, prophetic word, prophetic dreamer, charismatic, Pentecatholic scoundrels. God wants to bless you. God's doing it. Oh, my widow angels. This is disgusting. They're saying to you, peace, peace. There is no peace. Seven years of death is coming. And you got these devils. These devils glorifying themselves. Going after the heir of Balaam who love the wages of unrighteousness. These people are liars. They are wicked. They are disgusting deceivers. Don't fall for it! <laughs> By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Those witches. Seven years of plenty. I, I got this word. I got. I just got to release it. You know, uh, revival is. Are you? Oh, peace, peace. There is no peace. There is no peace, saith my God, for the wicked. And the people to whom they prophesy 
shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword, those who fall for it. If you fall for it, you're going to get what they're getting. And they shall have their have none to bury them, them, their wives, nor their sons, nor their daughters, for I will pour their wickedness upon them. Yeah, and it's called the time of Jacob's trouble. Seven years of blessing coming upon you. The Lord rebuke you all, you wicked prophetic dreamers and you prophetic uh, visionaries. The Lord rebuke every single one of you, you wicked heathen, you devil heretics. Uh, make me sick, man. And of course, Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. We covered this one in the last video, but like I said, we're going to go over it again. Okay? Beg your pardon, brethren. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 16 on to verse 22. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Again, people, I got this word and I got to release it. Revival is coming. Seven years are coming, oh my angels. That that one that one woman with the tattoo, dressed like a man, bobbing like this. Are you nuts? You fall for that? You deserve what you get. You, de you deserve what you get if you fall for that nonsense. Okay? Yes, Satan, through the ignorance of God's word, might have blinded you. If you're here listening to this, get yourself an authorized version of the scriptures. Okay? Don't mess with the Bible. Okay? That's not being causing strife. That's, you know, uh, being distinct. Okay? Distinction. Okay? <laughs> I'm not a Christian. I don't read a Bible. I'm of the Church of the Living God, and I trust the Scriptures. Distinction. Distinction from those who call themselves that. Okay? Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They still they say still unto them that despise me. The Lord has said, Ye shall have peace. And they say even unto every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. That's exactly what these prophetic people do. <laughs> this this is exactly what they do. Verse 17. <laughs> okay? This is exactly. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. I have not sent these prophets. I have not sent these prophets. Yet they ran. We talked about this in the previous video. They ran. They want to be, look at me, look at me, look at me. Okay? I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then should they have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. But no, tune in next week for your next prophetic word. Oh, God gave me a vision. Oh, I got, I have seen someone giving a thousand dollars, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter 11, come on. This is, this is who these people are seeing. They're not seeing the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 on to verse 15. 
for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, transforming themselves. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light, son of the morning, okay? Son of the morning. Not light bearer. If I, ha I have said light bearer before, I repent of that, forgive me. That was wrong for me to say that. I confess a fault to you. Uh, I have said before, light bear. Uh, no, Lucifer means son of the morning. Okay? Lucifer, Satan. One being. Okay? I have, I have said before in videos, I have referred to Satan as Lucifer, as the light bearer. Light bearer is not in scripture. Uh, Lucifer is the son of the morning. Okay? All those stones, precious stones on him, so bright and shiny, okay? Forgive me for ever saying um, light bearer. Light bearer is not in scripture. Light bearer, yes, brother, is a Masonic term, okay? So please forgive me for saying that. Let's continue, okay? Verse 14, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And what is their end according to their works? Hmm? What is their end according to their works? Well, we already looked at it in verse 24 about how they are going to perish with famine and with sword. Ezekiel chapter 11. Ezekiel chapter 11. Ezekiel chapter 11, verses 22 under verse 25. Then did the cherubims lift up their wings, and the wheels beside them. And the glory of the God of Israel was over them above. And the glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city, and stood upon the mountain, which is on the east side of the city. Afterward, afterwards, the Spirit took me up and brought me in a vision by the Spirit of God, capital S Spirit there, into Chaldea, to them of the captivity. So the vision that I had seen went up from me. Then I spake unto them of the captivity all the things that the Lord had shewed me. Okay? So this vision brought him someplace, and he saw. And what he saw, he shared. Remember this, because when we get to what Peter went through, okay? Remember this. Remember this. Okay? If you're keeping notes, okay, take your little pen, okay? Write down here Ezekiel chapter 11, verses 12 on to 25. Put a highlight over there and cross-reference this with something in Acts that we're going to eventually look at, okay? Okay? Remember that, okay? Now, while we're here now in Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 12, verses 21 on to verse 25. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 21 on to verse 25. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb? that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, the days are prolonged and every vision faileth? Yeah, these, these false prophets. Revival is coming. Seven years of blessing and coming upon you. God loves you. Get, God, I say, I've seen a vision of someone. No. Their visions fail. And because they're calling themselves Christians, and then you lost people, see, well, these are Christians giving prophecy and none of it comes to pass? Kind of like with that whole Trump debacle. You saw all these stupid, charismatic, Pentecatholic people giving these Trump prophecies and they pfft, all went downhill. Yeah, yeah. Remember, Christians, the crusaders with the crosses on their tunics. Christians, all the people who gave the Trump prophecies that went down to the toilet. Yeah. You see why I don't want to be associated with anything that is called Christian? And you do, huh? That, that's uh, it's between you and the Lord, buddy. Okay? But, let's continue. Let's read verse 22 again. Son of man, 
What is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision faileth? Tell them therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say unto them, The days are at hand, and the effect of every vision. For there shall no, be no more uh, any vain vision, <coughs> nor flattering divination within the house of Israel. Vain vision or flattering divination, which is all that these uh, prophetic dreamers, these prophetic visionaries have. Okay? Beg your pardon. That's all they have. Vain and flattering. For I am the Lord, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall be no more prolonged. For in your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word and will perform it. Seth, the Lord God. Now, with that, we have to remember Deuteronomy chapter 18. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 18. Come on. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 20 under verse 22. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Other gods, oh, like yourself, oh, the Jesus of Catholicism, the Jesus of Christianity. The Jesus of Christianity today is not the Jesus of the authorized version of the scriptures. Their Jesus, these prophetic people, their Jesus is that man of sin, the son of perdition. Their Jesus is Satan. Okay? And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. And all these prophetic word people that you uh, see here on YouTube in your searches, <laughs> that they've, they've threatened me. Of course, of course, of course they have. You know, I, I got a public email, <laughs> okay, <laughs> unfortunately. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, you blasphemed the Holy Ghost? Shut up. Every one of you who sent me emails about how I blasphemed the Holy Ghost, uh, you're, listen, you're not rightly dividing the word of truth. You didn't watch the entire video, which is, of course, and, you know, because man has the attention span of a gnat. Okay, but you didn't watch the video. You're not rightly dividing the word of truth. You're not saved. You're lost. Go away. Okay. Go away. You got you guys do the work of your father, the devil, and may he reward you greatly because this is the best you're ever going to get. Okay. But if the thing come to pass from a true prophet of the Lord, then that's what the Lord has sp spoken. It's like, well, well, what about when something like these Ken Copelands or something like that actually does come to pass? What about that? Huh? Well, Deuteronomy chapter 13. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 under verse 5. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, we covered this in the last video, we have to go over it again today, okay? And give it thee a sign or a wonder. Hey, pause the video right now, okay? Pause the video. First Corinthians chapter twenty, uh, chapter one, verses uh, verse twenty-two, I believe it is. Verse of uh, between twenty and tw uh, twenty-four. There we go. First Corinthians chapter one, uh, second. Uh, First Corinthians chapter one, verses twenty on to verse twenty-four. Read that. Who requires a sign? Okay. Now, let's continue. Okay. And the sign of the wonder come to pass. Whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Well, they're talking about Jesus. Yes, they are, these prophetic devils. Yes, they are. But they're not talking about 
to Jesus of the scriptures. Okay? So this is fulfilled when these devils, if one of their stupid little satanic prophecies come to pass and Satan is allowed to bring that to pass for judgment upon those who will fall for that, these false prophets, okay, they're fooling you to go after other gods, okay? Not the God of the scripture, okay? Do you see that? Hmm? Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dream. Okay, let's read that again. Verse 2. And the sign and the wonder come to pass whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you. Proveth you. Do you have to prove yourself to the Lord? No. Because the Lord knows all men. Who is to proveth you? Proveth you. Whether, you know, you, you say you're a Christian and you're falling for all this psychobabble nonsense from these prophetic devil, uh, devils. Huh? And you're, you're a Christian, huh? You, I baptized in the Holy Ghost. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Uh, the Lord proves you. Is proving you like, no, you're, you're not serving. You're not serving the God of the scriptures. You're serving Satan. Okay? You're serving Satan. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. We don't, we don't do that. Remember, vengeance belongs unto the Lord, not unto us today. Because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Yeah, God's vengeance is going to be coming on these, these wicked uh, false prophets. But see, Satan will be allowed for some, for every once in a while, some of these heretics for something to come to pass to show all of, the, all of those of you who follow them that you're not following the true God. See, these false prophets, okay, these females, prophetic dreamers, prophetic visionaries, okay, they're enticing you people to go after other gods. Not the God of the scripture. Other gods. Oh, like God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. The Trinity, which is Satan. Oh, here, let me, let me make my point. That's why I think of the Trinity. And no, I won't hold back, by the way. Thank you very much. Yeah, I spit on the Trinity. The Trinity is satanic. The scriptures do not teach the Trinity. Okay? No, they don't. But see, these people are enticing you to go after other gods, people. And, and now go back to Ezekiel chapter 12. Ezekiel, go back to Ezekiel chapter 12. Ezekiel chapter 12. I closed my place. Okay? Ezekiel chapter 12. And let's read verses 26. On to verse 28 now. Again the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, The vision that he seeth is for many days to come, and he prophesieth of times that are far off. Therefore say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged any more, but the word which I have spoken shall be done, saith the Lord God. And the word that our Lord has spoken is right here. And it shall be done according as it is written. It is written. It is written. See, these false prophets speak outside of Scripture. They don't use Scripture. Oh, they might they might read a few verses. They, they expound nothing and they go off on their own things. And what they say contradict. Why? Because they are not 
dispensational. They are not rightly dividing the word of truth. These people are trying, again, they are trying to convince you that they are Old Testament prophets. Now, let's go to the book of Acts. Okay, let's go to the book of Acts. Like I said, <laughs> um, after the book of Acts, okay, after the book of Acts, you see no mention about dreams in the Pauline epistles. Visions are mentioned one time, but uh, and we're going to, uh, I believe we go over that. Yes, we do. Yes, we do about the visions that Paul saw. Okay, we're going to go over that. Okay, and how it was not lawful for a man to utter. All right, but... God does not operate in visions and dreams anymore because someone who is saved of the church of the living God has God living within them. Okay, we, we covered this pretty good in the previous video. Okay, and you want to hear God speaking to you? Read the scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures. Hmm? You want to hear him speaking to you? Uh, like I do, when you read the scriptures, speak audibly out loud. That way, when you're speaking, reading his word, he can get your attention through your own lips. Okay? God is not speaking as he did in the Old Testament. Why? Because those who are saved have God within them. We today prophesy. Yes, we do. We covered that in the previous video as well. And prophesying today is someone who is saved who has God within them, speaking to you through the scriptures. The Spirit, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord is that Spirit within me, is speaking to you through the scriptures. That's prophesying for today. 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 6. Talk about that, okay? Okay? But, uh, when it comes to dreams and acts... After Acts chapter 2, you see dreams appear only one time after Acts chapter 2, and that's in Jude, okay? Visions after Acts chapter 2, yes, you do see. And in the previous video, I kept saying after Acts chapter 2. Uh, you see visions, uh, These they have visions throughout the book of Acts, but why? Okay, we covered this in the previous video. They were sign gifts. Signs for the Jews confirming them. And the sign gifts started to, the death knell was put upon them after Acts chapter 7. Yes, after Acts chapter 7, within the book of Acts, yes, yes, there were still miracles. But see, after the rejection of Israel, of the gospel, the sign gifts started to, after that, they started to dwindle away. Very similar about how God said in the book of Genesis that man's days will be 120 years. Did that happen right away? No, it did not. It happened generally, uh, gradually. But when God said that man's days will be 120, that is when the thousand years that people were ended. It ended there. Gradually, man's lifespan got shorter and shorter. After Acts chapter 7, the sign gifts were done, but they gradually depreciated. See? See? Acts is a book of transition. Beware of those who make their whole to-do off of the book of Acts. Okay? Now, go to Acts chapter 2. Okay? Acts chapter 2. Come on, Brad. You were just there. Okay? Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Now, we, we expound on this in the previous video very good, so we're not going to expound on it too heavily in this. Peter here is quoting the prophet Joel. Joel, okay? Acts chapter 2, verse 17 and 18. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters, your sons and your daughters, is reference unto the Jews, the Hebrews. The Hebrew is that line, we looked at it, that began with Abram, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is the chosen line from Shem, the Hebrew. 
Okay, that's why it's impossible for a Hamite to be a Hebrew. That's why it's impossible for a Japhethite to be a Hebrew. Because the Hebrew is from Shem, called from Shem. And it is from the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We've talked about that before, okay? But, okay. And your sons and your daughters, reference unto the Jews, shall prophesy. And your young men shall see vision, and your old men shall dream dreams, also speaking about the Jews. And on my servants, and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days, and my spirit, and they shall prophesy. That is a reference unto us Gentiles. Okay? Verse 17 is talking strictly to the Jew. And then verse 18 is reference unto the Gentiles. About how us Gentiles would be eventually grafted in. And they will prophesy. How do you prophesy today? What is prophesying today? I just told you. Someone of the church of the living God, who God has God within them, uh, will speak to you. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit within the believer, will speak through the scriptures unto you. That is prophesying today, okay? But go to Joel chapter 2. Hold your place there. Joel chapter 2. Not Haggai, Brad. Okay? Joel chapter 2. Come on. Get there. I beg your pardon, brethren. <laughs> Joel, which is right after Hosea. Joel chapter 2, verses 28 on to verse 32. And Joel chapter 2. And it shall come to pass, and it shall come to pass afterward, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, speaking of Jews, and your men and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Yes, Jews, signs, sign gifts, referring on to the sign gifts. Peter here in verse 17, in Acts chapter 17, is saying, here, this is happening. This is fulfilled as far as the sign gifts on to the Jews. Yes, sign gifts on to the Jews. Yes, okay. Verse 29 in Joel chapter 2. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. And in this, the servants and upon the handmaids. And remember, Gentiles were allowed unto the Jews, the Hebrews. The Hebrews were allowed to keep us Gentiles for servants and handmaidens. So this is a reference unto us Gentiles. Okay? Verse 18 in Acts chapter 2. Okay? So, verse 17 is talking about the sign gifts right there. Verse 18 is a reference unto us being grafted in to the tree of the Jew. Okay? And verse 19 in Acts chapter 2. And I will shew wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. Second coming. Okay? The second coming that's a reference unto. Okay, because it says she wonders in heaven above and signs. The Jews require a sign. Okay, signs. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, oh, there are going to be a lot of signs. So you see, it's a little, it's a mini microchasm. Okay, you got verse 17 talking about here, sign gifts for the Jews. Verse 18, the Gentiles being brought in. Verse 19, the wonders during the time of Jacob's trouble. And verse 20, verse 20, talking about the notable day of the Lord come, his second coming. And the reminder, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm -hmm. And you don't see anything about calling upon the name of the Lord in the book of Revelation. No, because uh, during the book of Revelation, during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. You take that mark of the beast, you're done for. Okay? Now, we, we, we didn't finish in Joel chapter 2. I, I beg your pardon, okay? I beg your pardon for that, <laughs> okay? 
Go back, get to Joel chapter 2. I'm sorry for that, brethren. Joel is right. Daniel, Hosea, Hosea, excuse me, as I was corrected. Hosea, Joel. Joel chapter 2, picking up at verse 30. Uh, let's read the whole thing again, verses 28 on to verse 32. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, talking about the Jews, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Not everybody gets the spirit of God, obviously, no. But it's available. He's available if you come to him on his terms, okay? And your sons and your daughters, the Jews, and your men, your old men, your young men shall see visions, you know, dreams and stuff like that, sign gifts unto the Jews. And I will, sh and also, and also, Upon the servants and upon the handmaidens, maids, Gentiles. In those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will shew wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said. And in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Talking about the future prophecy of um, the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Okay? We, we expound on this deeply in the previous video, okay? Which will be in the description box. But now go to Acts chapter 9. Okay? Acts chapter 9. The Jews require a sign. The sign gifts, the speaking in languages, healing the sick, raising the dead. Okay? That kind of stuff. Those were signs. Signs for Jews. Greeks seek after wisdom. A Greek is a Gentile. Okay? Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, verses 10 on to verse 12. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. Question. Was Ananias asleep? No, seriously. Was he? No. No. Remember, I, I, I told you about, in Numbers, about the trance thing? The trance thing? Remember I told you to hinge that? Okay. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth, and has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Now, Paul was blind. so he And Paul saw the heavenly vision. He saw, he actually saw the Lord himself, okay? And was blinded temporarily. Uh, Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26, verses 19 on to verse 23. Before King Agrippa, Paul. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. The heavenly vision. What was that? When the Lord appeared to him on the Damascus road. The Lord from heaven appeared unto Saul. Saul, who would become Paul, saw the Lord. Okay? He saw the Lord. He says even, Paul said, have I not seen the Lord? He saw the Lord. Okay? Hence a true apostle. A true apostle of the Lord. Fortunately, we learn in Acts chapter 1, yeah, there are apostles appointed by men. But the ones that our Lord um, counts, uh, gives credit to are the ones that he has chosen. Not the ones that, because the Matthias, you don't hear of him after that. Okay, after they chose him. Do you? What, what, I mean, of course, of course there's a uh, deuterocanical uh, apocryphal book of Matthias. But uh, no. No. There are apostles that man makes, which our Lord doesn't count as a true apostle, because a true apostle 
saw the Lord personally and were personally appointed by the Lord. So you had to see the Lord with your eyes and be personally appointed by him to be a, an actual apostle. You got people today like that apostle Gino Jennings or whatever his name is? Oh, not an apostle. Oh, by man. You are because you say you are, but not by God. Yeah, give me a break. Okay. Verse 20. Okay. But shoot first unto them at the, of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works me for repentance. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. So the Moses, so Moses and prophets, prophets and Moses, prophets and Moses, hmm. prophets and Moses, prophets and Moses, the scriptures, okay, the scriptures. Because remember, uh, there was not at this time a completed canon of scripture. What were they using? The Old Testament. Okay? So the heavenly vision. Paul, who was not asleep, saw the Lord appear to him. Okay? The heavenly vision. He saw the Lord. Okay? Paul did. A Jew, who the Lord chose to replace Judas. There are those out there who said they have seen the Lord today. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. No, you have not. There are those out there who said, well, I, I'm sure of it, I'm sure of it. I'm sorry. That doesn't jive with Scripture. Okay? No, you did not. No, you did not. Okay? And now go to Acts chapter 10. Oh boy, Acts chapter 10, Cornelius. Cornelius is going to be a subject of the part three of this little mini-series here, okay? And uh, part three, uh, have you seen God lately? That's going to be part three of this video, of this mini-series here. Because the, these, so not all of them, not all, all of them have that chutzvah, to say these prophetic dreamers and these prophetic visionaries. Not all of them have the, uh, like the one Hamite woman <coughs> in the beginning of the uh, previous video. She was quick to say, the Lord uh, came to me. He didn't appear to me. Uh, she was quick to jump on that. But there are some out there who said, God appeared unto me. Okay. I remember that Bentley guy said that before. That uh, the Lord Jesus came to him as a fireman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, give me a break. But subject of another video, Acts chapter 10. Cornelius, verses 1 on to verse 6. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God all the way. Okay? Now, this is after Acts chapter 8. The Ethiopian eunuch was the first Gentile after Acts chapter 7. Okay? But here is Cornelius. Okay? He saw in a vision. Cornelius saw in a vision. Evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. Hmm. And when he looked on him, when he looked on him, okay, says when he looked on him, doesn't say that he looked at him, looked on him, okay? Saw his, like, when he looked, at him, looked on him, it's like, oh, wow. He saw the, the countenance thereof. Looked on him. Saw the countenance, not at him. Words that have meaning, words are important, okay? 
And when he looked on him, I'd be interesting to see what the Bible say on verse 4 on this. He was afraid and said, what is it? Capital L, Lord. Hmm. Hmm. Cornelius, a Gentile? But yet, capital L, Lord? Hmm. Did Cornelius see the Lord? I believe so. More on that in another video. But let's continue. And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Shimon, whose surname is Peter. He lodgeth with one Shimon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Peter. So go to Peter. Hmm. Okay. Now, let's skip a little and go to verses 9 on to verse 20. Why would the Lord evidently appear to Cornelius? Why? <clears throat> to show Peter something. The lengths that the Lord will go to for the apple of his eye. What do I mean? Check this out. Acts chapter 10 now. Let's read verses 9 on to verse 20. Remember the trance thing? Okay. Remember the trance thing? Remember that? Okay. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. Now, was that a... <clears throat> no. In prayer, he fell into a trance. Not asleep, but yet zoned out. You could say not really fully like, Ugh! wide awake, yet awake, but not asleep. Hmm. Kind of that in-between thing, that, that slumbering. Hmm. Okay. And saw heaven opened. Okay. Now, visions. We've seen how they've been applied thus far. Not always in a trance-like state. Not always. Not always. Um, the very first reference of it. We don't know if uh, Abram was in a trance-like state, but thus far in the visions of the night. Hmm? Okay, let's continue. And saw a heaven open, and a certain vessel descending up onto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. You cannot use that verse for flat earth defense. Okay, that's ridiculous. Stop it. Stop it. That is the most ludicrous thing that you can go to to say, see four corners, let down to the earth, uh, flat, shut up. That That is a horrible verse to try to use for that. For that. Horrible. Stop. Okay. I had to address that. Beg your pardon. Let's continue. Okay. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Okay? What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, matching uh, uh, what was it? Shimon, son of Jonas. Lovest thou me? Three times. Three times denial. Okay. Three times. Peter needed to see it three times to get through his thick skull. Okay. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. 
Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Shimon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Shimon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the capitalist spirit, and the Lord is that spirit, said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Okay? See, let, let, let scripture, uh, now, before we go here, okay, what I have cleansed, that call not thou common, okay? Rightly dividing the word of truth, dear people. That's what this is talking about, okay? Um, go to Ephesians chapter 3, okay? Go to Ephesians chapter 3. We covered this in the previous video. We're, we're covering it again, okay? Because this, this right here, not rightly dividing the word of truth. If you people would study to shew thyselves approved unto God, that ye be workmen who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, you would not be falling for these prophetic devils. You wouldn't be if you were rightly dividing the word of truth. Dispensational. Rightly dividing the word of truth is not promoted in Christianity. It is not. It's actually frowned upon and looked on as heresy. And there are those out there who call themselves hyper-dispensationalists, but yet what this, the, uh, determines a dispensation is how man is made right with God in that dispensation. And you got these guys calling themselves dispensational, but they say it's from faith alone, from Genesis onto Revelation. Blah. They're not dispensational. If you people would just rightly divide the word of truth, okay? The whole book is written for you. It's not all written to you. It would solve so much of your problems. Because... Those prophetic devils are telling you, taking things out of the Old Testament and trying to apply them for today. It doesn't happen. Prove it to you. Absolutely. Ephesians chapter 1, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 on verse 6. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to your word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Mystery of Christ. Hmm, what is that mystery? Which in other ages, other dispensations, was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the capital S Spirit. In other ages, and other dispensations, it wasn't revealed until now, until Paul, about this dispensation. Okay? Okay? That's rightly dividing the word of truth. We, we, we talked about this in the previous video. Okay? In the book of Acts, in the earlier parts of the book, book of Acts, it was this dispensation. But as he offered, as our Lord offered unto the Jews the kingdom of heaven, and they rejected that, he had to, to be a just and right God, he had to offer the gospel unto the Jew first also. And hence, they rejected that as a nation. Jews can still be saved today, absolutely. Boom, absolutely. But we were grafted in to the tree of the Jew to make them jealous. That's what Romans chapter 11 is about, see? And what is this mystery? What is this mystery? Verse 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body, of the same body. That like the hyper, that there's, that there's, there's one gospel for the Jew and then there's one for the Gentile. A lot of these easy believism uh, heretics uh, fall run into that. They say that, uh, well, calling on the name of the Lord, that's for the Jews. Not for us Gentiles. Shut up. The Lord rebuke you. Wicked heretics. Okay? No. No, 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 no. That the Gentiles should be fellow 
heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. The good news. Okay? That's what that means. Okay? Gospel means good news. And, and also chapter uh, Acts chapter 18 verses 24 on to bleh, I can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> verse 24 on to verse 28. Right? Yes. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. People make this, uh, well, why did Peter say, repent and be baptized? Because it because he was going off of what he knew, the baptism of John, okay? But then in another chapter, repent and be converted, no baptism. See, Catholics like to say hinge on water baptism, just like a lot of the Pentecatholics with their Acts 2.38, okay? And they go to Mark chapter 16 and whatnot. Why did Peter say about the baptism thing, okay? Because Peter only knew the baptism of John. Okay? Remember, it was a thing of transition. When the death, burial, and resurrection, the blood was shed on the cross, okay? Our Lord went up to heaven uh, with the death, burial, and resurrection. That was this, the beginning of this current dispensation. This dispensation began with the death of the testator. We get into that in the previous video, okay? But, when Peter gave his sermon, as it were, in Acts chapter 2, he only knew the gospel. He only knew the baptism of John, knowing that it was oh, oh, like okay, repent and get baptized. Okay, knowing oh, because what did John symbolize his baptizing? The coming of the kingdom of heaven. You know, coming of the Lord and baptizing them for what? Okay, and they were and uh, Jesus's disciples were baptizing people for what? For the kingdom of heaven, which the Jews rejected. The gospel. Okay, for the Jews, they okay went to the Jew first. It was this dispensation, but it went specifically to the Jew. It wasn't a different way to be saved because why? The perfect sacrifice for sins was made. The blood was shed. It was already there. Okay, it was already there. There are not two different ways. Okay, there's only one way. Okay, but okay, baptizing. Okay, before it got hammered out, before. The Jews rejected the gospel. It was kind of shaky in a way. Okay? It really was. Until they rejected it and brought us Jews in. Okay? But Peter only knew the baptism of John. That's why he baptized. That's why we looked at this. Okay? Baptism doesn't save you. Okay? Baptism doesn't save you. It's an outward profession of an inner conversion. Okay? You're not going to go to hell if you if you don't get baptized, okay? Mark chapter sixteen defies it defines itself, okay? With the first part of Mark sixteen about believing and baptizing shall be saved, okay? Talking about to the Jew first, and then, uh, but he who believeth not shall be damned. Talking about when uh, the Jews have rejected the gospel, okay? Okay. All right. Let's continue. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom, when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much with which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, Showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Okay? Now go back to Acts chapter 10. And now we're going to read verses 44 on to verse 48. But, oh, before, before we do that, uh, in Acts chapter 10, <laughs> look at verses 25 and 26. 
And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. And remember, Catholics say that the, the Pope then was started by Peter and that disgusting Francis has men bow to him. Every, all the nations are going to bow to the Pope. And they call Peter the first Pope. Catholics do. Heresy, Satanism, yeah, which is Catholicism. Um, uh, the first Pope did this. <laughs> Peter was never a Pope, by the way. But Peter took him up saying, stand up. I myself also am a man. And Vicarious Vicar D, I believe that is, or Vicar of Christ, another Christ, Christ on earth, which Catholicism teaches you about Sosa. Actually, Francis, you know, Francis, the puppet Pope of Sosa, the head of the Jesuits, the head of Catholicism. Francis is a Jesuit. Okay, the Jesuits are subservient unto the general. Hence, Francis is subservient unto the black Pope. Come on, people. Okay. But I had to mention that. Uh, verses 20, where, where are we now? Verses 28 on to verse 33. Peter, he said, and he said unto them, ye know how that it is unlawful, how it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come on to one of another nation. But God has shewed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. He did that with the vision. And also, for Peter, going to a Cornelius, okay, who was not a Jew. Cornelius was not a Jew. So the Lord orchestrated this thing with Cornelius and the vision to get across to Peter. Hey, but God has shewed me that I should call, not call any man common or unclean. Therefore I came on to you as on to you without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent for. I asked therefore, I asked therefore, for what intent ye have sent for me? Oh, where are we reading? Oh, verses 28 on to verse 33. I'm sorry. We're, <laughs> you probably already figured it out. Verses 28 on to verse 33. Let's continue. And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour. And the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. And said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Shimon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Shimon, a tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to thee. And thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded of, commanded thee of God. Hmm. So, so, Cornelius had that vision. Peter had that vision, okay? To show Peter that not to call anyone common or unclean, okay? And the ultimate to this is verses 44 on to verse 48 now. Beg your pardon for that. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision, the Hebrews, the Jews, which believed, were astonished. To show, God went through all this to show his people, hey, guess what? Us, the Gentiles are now part of this. You talk about signs and wonders. Who required the sign? Those of the circumcision? Jews. Do you see? The sign gifts were for the Jews, people. Okay? Acts chapter 7, they rejected the gospel. The sign gifts started to deplete. Okay? Okay, because by the time, what was it? Um, Paul didn't heal someone. I forget what book that, I think that's in 2 Timothy. Um, I left him in Melitum sick, okay? The sign gifts started to deplete after Acts chapter 7, okay? You see the sign gifts still within the book of Acts. Definitely after the book of Acts, no more sign gifts. Because why? The signs were for the Jews. And let's continue in verse 45. 
And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now we already read in Ephesians chapter 3. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water, knowing only the baptism of John, that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. And this is before Acts chapter 15, by the way. Okay? Very interesting. Very interesting. So visions were for revelation. But remember that thing we said about the trance? Peter was in a trance, as was, uh, as was uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Balaam? Hmm. So this trance-like state of this vision thing, between awake and deep sleep, right in the middle there, okay? Hmm. Where you're not really asleep, yet you're not fully awake, but yet awake, okay? Not, uh, not that. Still responsive to whatever it is that you're focused on, but uh, around you, you know? You know what I mean? And let's see, let's go now to Acts chapter 12. And we're almost done. Acts chapter 12, verses 5 on to verse 11. Acts chapter 12, verses 5 on to verse 11. Check this out. Check this out. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. Remember the trance thing, okay? Somewhere between deep sleep not really awake, remember? Okay, check this out, okay? And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said, saith unto him, Cast thy garment, garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him. And wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel. Are you looking into that? But thought he saw a vision. Hmm. Hmm. He was asleep between two soldiers. The Lord, hey, wake up. Let's, let's go. It's like, wow, is this really happening? Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. Hmm. Don't worry, we're going to look at that really quick. Okay? Hmm. Okay? Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. Was I awake? Was I asleep? Hmm. And when they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street. And forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, note that, when Peter was come to himself, hmm, he said, now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. So he thought he saw a vision, but it really happened. Because when it came to himself, so was Peter like in a zombified, unacting, trance-like state? No, obviously not. But what was he focused on? See, zoned out on who? The angel of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ who rescued him. You see? And of course, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 4. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Here's the last time you see visions. 
The only time you see visions or vision in the Pauline epistles. The only time. Okay? I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. So whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. Hmm. And verse 4, how he was caught up into paradise, the third heaven, and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. God, you know, these people who've been to heaven, been to hell, and come back and want to write a book, like we discussed in the previous video. If Paul, the greatest of the church of the living God, couldn't utter what he saw, who are these people? They're not saved. They're not of the church of the living God. And check me out. Check me out. You don't see vision in the Pauline epistle. You just saw the only appearance of visions in the Pauline epistles. Doctrine for us specifically today in this dispensation. Okay? In the Pauline epistles. Okay? You don't see it. Okay? Actually, you don't see it beyond. Uh, you see vision, I think, uh, one time in the book of Revelation, just like dream. You don't see dream in the Pauline epistles, okay? You see dream in Acts chapter 2. You see it in Jude, okay? But after that, that's it, okay? Why is it that you don't see any of this in the Pauline epistles? Because God doesn't operate that way today, okay? As in the Old Testament, we, we talk about this in, deep, in detail in the previous video, God does not operate this way today. We have just looked at what, how Scripture defines visions, how they are used, how they come about, uh, come about, and how God uses them. Okay? These people who said, God spoke to me, they didn't receive it from the Lord Jesus Christ. They received it from Satan. They are not hearing from the God of the Scriptures, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. They are hearing from the little G God of this world, that son of the morning, Lucifer, Satan, that old serpent, the dragon. Okay? That's who these people are hearing from. That is the one who is giving these devils this nonsense that so many people are gobbling up. They're not hearing from the Lord Jesus Christ. They are not hearing from the Lord Jesus Christ given to you in the authorized version of the scriptures. They are not. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, which is before the death, burial, and resurrection. But Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? See, the church of the living God it's redeemed, caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. That seven-year period, which you, some of you erroneously refer to as the Great Tribulation. And yeah, you Christians are going through the Tribulation, but th those of us of the Church of the Living God, we're going to be redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. Distinction! Distinction! If you got a problem with distinction, go away! Okay? I'm all about distinction. We need distinction, brethren, in these times. But... Let's finish this in Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 and 5. Okay, This is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. During the time of Jacob's trouble, you have to endure to the end. Okay, You can't take the mark of the beast. It's faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. Don't believe someone if they tell you it's not. Okay, But Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 and 5. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. I am Christ. Some people want, well, I'm Jesus. You, you'd shoot them. <laughs> it's like, no, you're not. Christ. Christ, anointed one. 
anointed one. Jehovah saves the anointed one. Okay? Christ is some the anointed one. Okay? So, like the, in the, the previous video, the last video that we saw before the video began, uh, that young man, Hamite, who is, uh, this do doesn't normally happen to me. Uh, this is rare. Oh, so that means you're a Christ? You're an anointed one? Like uh, these wicked female devils, they're all anointed ones? They're charismatic. They have the gift. You don't. Yeah, they, they have all the gifts from their father, the devil. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and verses 23 and 24. If any man say shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets. And shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And very elect right there is actually a reference onto the Jews. Okay, talk about that in the Calvinism video, which I will link in the description box. But this is for instruction and in righteousness here. Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 on to verse 23. People. Don't believe these charlatans. Don't believe these lying devils. I have dreamed. I have dreamed. I have seen. I have seen. They ain't seen squat. They've only seen what their father the devil has given them. Don't fall for it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves, going after the uh, reward of uh, unrighteous mammon, the heir of Balaam. Balaamites. Huh. Ought to call these people Balaamites, huh? Interesting. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Go to your little prophetic con conference there, you wicked witch. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you're getting all your joy and the glory because the glory that awaits you is fire and brimstone. You wicked devil. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Hmm? And in thy name cast out devils. Exactly what the care Catholic, Pentecatholics claim to be able to do. They speak prophecies over you. And they cast out devils. <laughs> and in thy name done many wonderful works. Then while I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. It's going to be it for this video. Part three will be coming sometime next week. Um, which is going to be about these, these same devils um, who, who would say they've dreamed dreams, they've seen visions, and also that they've seen the Lord today. Actually seen him. <laughs> yeah. But that's going to be it for this. Uh, people. People. Beware of these devils. Beware of these charismatic, Pentecatholic, Pentecostal. Uh, they're, the majority of them are Pentecostal. Okay? That, that's just the way it is. Um, don't fall for these people. 
They are tell they want you to believe that they are Elijah's or Elisha's, that they are prophets from the Old Testament, that you need prophetic men. No. What about John 16? The Spirit of Truth, he will guide you into all truth. The Spirit of Truth, he will guide you into all truth. The authorized version of the scriptures. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And these prophets, if they were prophets, if they were truly prophets prophesying to you, they'd have the authorized version. And they wouldn't just lightly glibly thing and then go off on something that's way out in left field that, that contradicts the scriptures. No. Beware, brethren. People. If you've fallen for this stuff, you're not rightly dividing the word of truth, take warning of these things. And if you've fallen for this and think you're saved and you're not, there's going to be a link in the description box that hopefully will help you. Let us reason together, you and I. But if you're too far gone, may God help you. So that's going to be it for this video. Um... The month of April, I got a calendar right up here. This month is going to be quite a trying month for us. My wife has many procedures. She's got a surgery to replace her replaced hip. Uh, I think I mentioned that before. And she's also got another procedure. And after on the 20th, <laughs> Hitler's birthday, <laughs> Columbine, yeah, great. But on the 20th is when my wife has her hip replacement, replacement surgery. And after the 20th, um, I'm not going to be doing too many videos uh, because I got my wife to look after. She's going to be in a wheelchair. And I'm going to have to skirt her around willingly because she is my own, she is my flesh and I love her dearly. But um, this coming month is going to be really rough for us. So please keep us in your prayers. We need all the prayers you can we can get. Uh, this is just going to be wow. Just going to be an incredible month. Um, if the videos aren't coming this month as you may be accustomed to them, please understand. Okay, please understand. My wife has a lot going on this month, and since my wife has a lot, I have a lot because the two are one flesh. Okay, so. If at some point you're like, wow, Brad, it's been almost a week and you haven't, that is why. Okay. But she's got something on the 5th. She's got something on the 7th. She's got something on the 11th. And hopefully uh, between the 12th and the uh, 18th or 19th in there, hopefully our best friend will come to join us for a, a good long while and have good fellowship because during, and also brethren, during that time between the 12th and the 19th, which happens to be Good Friday, Passover, and Astarte. Yeah, uh, we're going to, my wife is going to need all the encouragement that she can get. So please keep that in mind. Please keep us in your prayers. <laughs> going to be rough this month, but uh, praise the Lord, he's going to get us through it. So anyway, got, uh, got to this later than I had wanted. We had some things we had to do and uh, the Lord gave a wonderful chance of uh, fellowship this morning with some of the brethren and with a dear, dear, sweet young brother who don't often get too much fellowship with at all, which was beautiful. So, you know who you are. I love you. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. And hopefully this helped. Hopefully, you know, the scriptures, the scriptures speak for themselves about what this stuff is. Don't. Don't fall for these charismatic, wicked, wicked people. They're lost. And shame on you if you're following them. And if you don't want to receive the truth, then God's going to give you what you want. Be careful. Because the end thereof is death. So, anyway, God, get this uploaded. Wow, man, this is really late. <laughs> We love you.
Thank you very much for, uh, for watching this if you do, and we will see you in the next video.